afternoon and good evening. Sarah Smith, your Economic Development Coordinator for St. Lucie County. I'm here with a lovely panel of ladies in celebration of Women's History Month. Um, today is a wonderful day. It's International Women's Day and I'm here with a great panel of women to talk about that. I'm going to pass it over to Indira Seville Borgella and yeah. she is going to tell you guys about her mission, her vision, her business, and um, her well, purpose. Thank you, yeah. Sarah. I'm yeah. a pleasure to be here. Um, well, my name is Indira Seville Borgella. I am the owner of Treasure Coast Communications and Marketing, um, which is the umbrella company of Better Living and Marketplace Magazine and T Coast Studios. We have some other ventures. Um, my mission is to level the playing field. Um, our services uh, sometimes are out of reach for um, many, many organizations, many startup companies. Um, but the way we've positioned ourselves and the way we have our, our um, services laid out, um, it's pretty much attainable for, for everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. I am Wendy Conrad. I am a work culture strategist and founder of Your Happy Workplace. And I help small businesses and organizations to create their work cultures on purpose rather than by default, human-centered work cultures. And we do that through team conversations, leadership actions, and disruption, my favorite, <laughs> so that their organizations and their teams can thrive. I'm also a speaker and teacher, and I work with and speak to organizations all over the country. Thank you, Wendy. Leslie? Thank you so much, Sarah, for having us here on this absolutely amazing day for women all over the world. Uh, so I'm Leslie George and I am the founder of Mosaic Inc. And Mosaic Inc, our purpose is to help uh, women show up authentically. And um, so women, women and young girls to help empower them through whatever spaces that they're showing up in, whether they're showing up virtually or physically, but really giving them the tools um, and support so that they can now show up as themselves. Because a lot of times we hear that uh, with women, they really don't really know how, how they're positioned in the marketplace or, or, or in any space that they're in. Um, and so Mosaic Inc. is a, is a platform to help women uh, do that. And how do we do that? We do that through coaching, consulting. Um, I've also do, done that through books where women from all over the world have been co-authors co um, in, in our books. So um, that's who I am and I'm so glad to be here on this amazing day on International Women's Day. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I've had the opportunity to to write, co-write with you in one, of, in one of your books. So. Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, all of you all have decided to start your own business for one reason or another. Um, Wendy, tell me a little bit about your journey towards starting your business, whether you did it from a passion or whether you saw a need um, in the industry that you decided to start your business in. I think it's a mixture of all of those things. So in the couple of decades before I founded Your Happy Workplace, I worked for about 12 different small businesses. And in that experience, I kind of saw the same issue running through as a common thread, and that was work culture neglect. So with that experience and, and, and uh, experiencing a, a employment with an extremely toxic workplace, and realizing that businesses would need help creating something maybe they've never seen before or even heard of before, and that's healthy work cultures, that's kind of where your happy workplace was born from. Yes. And Dara, what about you? Well, I actually, um, I went to school for mass uh, media, well, media and mass communications. Um, and um, when I first moved to Florida, I was doing something that I really didn't, you know, want to do. I was in the medical field and one day I said, no more. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we launched, um, you know, Tico Studios. Um, and it's, that's, that's, got that's, started. that's how I got started. Right. Yeah. Leslie, I know you have a, mm. but <laughs> I'm just going to sit, <laughs> ladies, just sit, sit back. back. <laughs> So, so for me, uh, when I talk about female empowerment, it also comes from a diversity inclusive lens. So the reason why I decided to launch Mosaic is because as a black woman, I was told to my face that I will never make it in America as a black woman. I know I'm not the only one that has heard that. 
And so whether you are a woman in tech, whether you are a black woman in whatever field, you mentioned you were in the medical field. So it doesn't matter what field you're in as a woman, and then we're gonna put women of color and, and different ethnicities. Um, what I found is that that was a lack in the, in the marketplace and even in people's personal lives. So for me, that my platform was created so that women have a voice. And to give women a voice and also to let women know that we are here to support you. The, one of the, um, the platforms that Mosaic is, is on the RISE platform. So it's a blueprint, and basically RISE stands for we recognize you. We want to inspire you. The S is to support you, and the E is to educate. Wow, that's good. So that is the platform, that, that is the reason why Mosaic was started, because mm -hmm. um, whether we're talking about a young girl in Africa, or we're talking about a 60-year-old woman here in St. Lucie County, or we're talking about a 45-year-old uh, young girl in, in Palm Beach County, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We all have the same story. Mm -hmm. And the, one of the phrases that I created is that we are all uniquely the same, meaning we're all women. Mm -hmm. But as women, we all go through the same thing. So that's why I'm so excited for us to have this conversation. Um, during um, Women's History Month and on International Women's Day, because this is really solidifying what Mosaic is all about. So thank you. Okay, so um, great, great stories, great journeys. But now we want to talk about what happens in the midst of your journey. So we start a journey, whatever that journey is. Um, you guys have started a business, and I know that can be hard sometimes. Sometimes you want to give up. Sometimes you want to quit. Sometimes you ask yourself, why am I here? Why am I doing this? And there is something, though, that motivates you, that gives you the drive to continue the work that you do. Yeah. And so um, if you, yeah. Indira, share with me a story about, you know, um, a struggle that you've had and, and what, what kept you going? Progress kept me going. Actually seeing progress. Um, even if it's one step at a time, you're making progress. So that, that motivates me, that keeps me going. So although sometimes you may feel like, okay, you, you, you took a step back, yeah. but you know tomorrow you will take another step forward and another step forward. So as long as you're seeing progress, um, that should be enough motivation to keep you going. Yeah. Wendy? I think we would all agree, um, as women business owners especially, that we've thought about quitting at some time. Yeah. It seems like <laughs> the less complicated, uh, maybe safer choice. Um, but, and, and this is something that I tell my clients to do with their teams, is to remind myself of my why. Mm -hmm. Remind myself yes. of my purpose. Yeah. I feel deeply connected to this work. And um, another thing that, after I do that, is to surround myself with other women business owners. Cheerleaders yeah. who kind of can remind okay. you, mm -hmm. remind us, of how amazing we are when that doubt starts to creep in. So yeah. those are the two things that keep me going. And Leslie, mm. um, you know, I, I, I kind of want to put a little spin on the question. I need you to, to um, tell me a hardship that you went through, something specific, something that's either extremely funny or extremely sad. Mm. Um, yeah, tell me, tell me a story about that and then tell me how you overcame. Well, that, that, takes me, that takes me to the very beginning of Mosaic where, um, you know, I always appreciate your support as you were one of, um, you partaked in one of my first events. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go back to International Day of the Girl, October of 2018, where Mosaic had, I had the first ever live event. And, you know, when you are putting together an event, there, there's so many different things that's going through your head, especially at that time. It was the first event. And so I didn't know who was going to show up. I didn't know if I was going to get support. And to add on top of that, yeah. this is going back to 2018, my keynote speaker was a transgender female. So the, my support system at the time, the people that I had around me, the friends that I had around me, did not understand that. And so I had people that called me and said, you know, I want, I want to support you, but I, I really can't because I, I really can't wrap my head around that. Mm -hmm. And so just imagine your first live event 
for something that has been dropped in your spirit for probably about 20 years mm -hmm. wow. and now you're going to birth this thing mm -hmm. and you are not getting support but guess mm -hmm. what i just had to keep on moving yes. yeah. That event was an incredible event. Yes, it was. I had probably yeah. 20 vendors. There were probably 45 people in the audience. And that was literally the birth and where I could see lives transform, I, where I saw people with so many questions where they had never been in a room with a transgender female. And that female is Gina Duncan, which is an incredible friend of mine. Um, and she does incredible work across the country. But that story, that really hurt. Yeah because I knew going in into that event, I had to put on a smile. I had to go through the event like nothing happened, but the end, and back to what Wendy said, the why. So we can't yep. always worry about the how, because the event and people saying that they couldn't come, all that was part of the how. But the why is way bigger than me. The platform of Mosaic to help empower women and young girls across the world, that's bigger than me. That's a mission that I believe that even in my lifetime, that others can pick up that mantle and continue. So Sarah, thank you for um, having me dig deep because when, when I think about that story, the emotions that come up from that story um, of really trying to bring forth something and to really, really create a platform of inclusivity. I'm gonna go back and say that was 2018. The world has moved since then, yes. right? Yes. But my vision was way bigger than, than, than where the world is now. Mm -hmm. Because back in 2018, a lot of people were not embracing inclusivity. For me, that's always my lens. So thank you so much for having me Ooh. talk about that. Yeah. So we're women. Um, women in business, and um, that's our, our, our front facing, that's what we're telling our audience today, that we're women in business, but we are also women. And with being women, there's a lot of double duty happening. Mm. We have to be parents, we have to be wives, and we have to work and bring in income, and we do a lot. Um, and so if I'm a, a woman who has a vision inside of me and want to birth that vision. I want to start my own business. What advice could you give me, Indira? There are so many resources out there for women um, here to begin mm -hmm. with myself. Um, and I'm also on the advisory board of We Venture, which is uh, yes. an organization that um, their, their sole purpose is to assist women from startup to you know level two to, to you know second tier. Uh, companies um so there you have to just ask for help yes help is yes. here there are countless resources to plug into so um find your tribe find mm -hmm. your people mm -hmm. find your group find your 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 support system we're here yeah we're out here yeah Wendy before I get to the advice for women I would say flip that question a little bit and say the answer. Don't, don't be taking <laughs> my question. <laughs> no, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to fulfill my homework assignment. Uh, but my advice would be, first all of all, for business owners to pay women equally, specifically women of color and black women for doing the same jobs as men, for people to support women-owned businesses, for employers to put women in powers of, of places of leadership, for uh, employers to give flexibility to working mothers, mm -hmm. for communities, for workplaces, for families to not expect us as women yeah. to do it all mm -hmm. and be supportive of, the, of us. In the 1930s when women in the workforce, start, the numbers started to increase and into the 70s, we were still expected to run the household, raise the children, and yep. have a career. No one can do it all. So uh, my advice for women would be to not place that unrealistic expectation on ourself, yeah. to support each other, mm -hmm. to find your cheerleaders, yes. and, and, and be a, a support system for each other. Thank you, I love it, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Leslie. Uh, so for me, I'm just gonna round out this question, and Dara gave us some amazing resources. Uh, Wendy added to that is, just really know that you matter, right? Yeah. 
know that whatever has been put in you that you matter and the titles that we have mom sister aunt employee all the, the in church mm -hmm. all all those right all of those they don't matter mm -hmm. you come first the main thing i'm always going to say is also community mm -hmm. community is so important yes. why because you need that support you need to know that there's a group of, of people that you can go and lay whatever burdens without any type of judgment. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing about creating an inclusive platform for women is so that you know that Mosaic Inc. is here for you, no judgment, right? So the main thing is you matter. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. One thing my pastor always says is that he knows he's tea, he may not be your cup of tea, but he's tea. <laughs> he's tea. <laughs> so know that your tea, your tea, you may not be somebody else's tea, but your tea. And I think that's that's mm -hmm. really where we stand center first, yeah. is, to, is to show up, and every day is not going to be the same, but just to show up knowing that you matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Yeah. so Wendy, you, you, you went there. You, you <laughs> took it to the controversial level. Um, and I definitely wanted to, to get into that. Um, and if there is such a person out there that, that feel like women should not be paid equitably, um, if women do yeah. less or if, if a woman's place is in the home, would you talk directly to the audience? What would you, what would you tell the audience? So, you no, know, really speak directly I, to the I, audience. I, I think I'm on this carrot, <laughs> okay. but um, I would say to people like that who think that someone else individually or any other group is less than or that they are better than, to really go inward mm -hmm. and examine your relationship to power yes. and your relationship to control. Mm -hmm. Because I think whenever somebody thinks they're better than somebody else, there is a power dynamic going on. So you need to explore what your relationship and your attachment is to power and control. Does that mean that, um, it, it, could it be possible that they don't think that they, they're better? Um, they just, you know, it's kind of a, an inborn, inbred situation for them. Um, is that a possibility or no, it does signify power? I, I think, and I talk a lot about this in my work, um, we need to start asking questions mm -hmm. and not just this is the way we've always done it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Exactly. This is the way we've always done exactly. it. Why do it any differently? Mm -hmm. Women are expected to raise children, have careers, and manage the household. Why should we do it any differently? It's working for me, whoever that me might be. <laughs> so again, examining the, the power and control and who the, the, the situation is working for but also who it's not working for. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. That's really good, I like that. Yeah. Leslie, can you add anything to uh, Wendy's conversation? So, so for me, um, if we're talking about in the workplace and kind of how women show up in the workplace, uh, part of the things that I talk about is a lot of times, and I'm gonna talk about black women specifically, uh, black women, we show up in, in the workplace um, really having a lot of different hats in the workplace because as we are showing up and we are working some of the conversations that we have that's going on in our heads is we are trying to make white our white co-workers comfortable in the workplace and so when we are when we're doing when we're doing the the work that we are employed to do um, there's so much other chatter and so many other things that we have going on that really makes our job a little bit more difficult because of the way that we've always done it, because of the way the workplace may be set up um, unequitable for, for us as black women when we show up. So there's microaggressions that happen. There's a lot of code switching that black women that we do at work. And a lot of times we just do it just like that and don't even realize what we're doing, right? But I think that now that the 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 veil has been lifted with some of the things that happen in corporate. You have allies, someone like, like Wendy. Mm -hmm. You have allies that are there now that can help us. And when I say help us, one thing I've always said, what allies do is they can go into a room where we will never go into. 
And the fact that they can go forward and they can now go into a room and they can say, well, hey, what about Sarah? Well, who's Sarah? Well, yeah, you know who Sarah is. That's what allies do, mm -hmm. where allies will bring us into rooms where we before will never have access to or maybe never have access to. So, you know, in the workplace as, as black women, just want to end with that is that for us there's so many things that we go through and um, and I'm glad that we're having these conversations and Wendy and I have done several um, lives together where we talk about that because part of my platform is for us to be comfortable mm -hmm. with these uncomfortable conversations mm -hmm. why because we're talking about humanity mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about it's human stories mm -hmm. So why are we, because we've always done it that way, why are we not having those conversations? Mm -hmm. We know about water cooler conversations where we talk about so many different things. Why can't we talk about how are black women, women of color, how are they showing up in the workplace? Mm -hmm. So I think that the, the fact that now some corporations are having those type of conversations mm -hmm. and are now saying, what is it that we've been doing before that we were not doing right, that we can now do now, so that we can get it right. One of the things I, uh, one of the, um, there's a CEO of Reddit, which is, uh, I believe is Serena's husband. Mm -hmm. He founded Reddit and he was a CEO of Reddit. And he decided to step down. Why? Because he said he does not, he does not want his daughter to grow up and say, but daddy, when all this stuff was going on with women and, and, and um, how black people show up in the workplace. What is it that you did? So he stepped down to make a person of color the CEO of his company. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about when we're doing that type of intentional work mm -hmm. because it's human stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Powerful. And Dara, how has um, a women or a group of women championed you um, or been your ally? Um, well, there, there's several groups of women that um, that really pushed me, um, plugging into organizations like, uh, well, my sorority, for instance, mm -hmm. Zeta Phi Beta, mm -hmm. Sorority Incorporated, mm -hmm. Zeta Eta Zeta Chapter. <laughs> um, I can't tell you the, the, the support that I've received from them um, on a daily basis, mm -hmm. just checking in, um, has been just invaluable. Uh, plugging into organizations like We Venture, um, where they just, it's resource after resource, and it's, it's, a, it's a wide variety of resources from legal to personal to just how to balance your life. Um, just plugging into to, to those resources has been um, invaluable. And then on my morning commute, I listen to Leslie in the morning on Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and that, that gets you like fired up <laughs> in the morning, right? So it's, it's, I think, a combination of throughout the day, um, however you receive information, whether it be email, text, phone, um, just personal communication with, with people. Um, yeah, just plugging in and, yeah. and learning to stay plugged in. Yeah, I know sometimes um, I, I text a few women in the morning or yeah. I get a text and it's right, it seems to be always at the right time. Yes. And so that, that I, I received that. It's that like you're on the powerful. same wavelength, the same vibe, and they, 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 you know, they plug right into you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wendy, what resource would you give women, um, just a specific resource that you love and uh, is very helpful to you? Could you give that out to the audience? Today? A specific resource. I think just looking around you mm -hmm. and picking out who, again, who your cheerleaders are mm -hmm. and seeking to form relationships with other women business owners specifically, if that's what you're looking to do, because it can be kind of isolating sometimes, yes. especially if we're working from home yes. or if we don't have a support system within our business. So to, to seek those women out, either through your local chamber or through other organizations, mm -hmm to kind of say, hey, you know, let's meet for coffee later or let's do a virtual Zoom or let's, so you can have people to send and receive those texts from in the morning or to send little notes to in the mail um, that you get at just the right time. Mm -hmm. So to, we kind of have to f sometimes form our own resources for each other. So, so that's, that's really good, that is so true. We do need to form resources for each other. And I, I've heard, I heard Indira give We Venture a shout out, her sorority. Give somebody a shout out. Who's, who's, who's supporting you um, through this journey? 
Well, I feel like this is like my Grammy uh, acceptance <laughs> speech. I'd like to thank the following. Um, well, for me personally, I mean, they're not resources that everybody could use. I mean, I guess you could call my parents if you want. Right? Um, they'd be happy yeah, yeah, to husband. cheer you on. But I, I think I've been lucky and privileged enough to have unconditional love for my parents yeah. throughout my childhood. I know that's not everyone's experience. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I have their continued support in whatever I do. And also my partner in life, my husband, who has definitely supported your happy workplace, which has needed it mm -hmm. um, in its building stages. So, so those are some support systems that I have for myself. Great. Leslie, shout mm, out. Shout out, from, <laughs> shout out. So for me, oh my goodness, I have so many communities, right? So. I'm going to start with, um, I'll start with my husband, and um, so as you can see, I have pink hair now, yeah. and uh, next month you may see me have a different color hair, right? So for the last year, um, I've been, you know, just having fun, just being creative and, and having yeah. different color hair, right? Mm -hmm. And so the funny thing with that is that most women will ask me, well, what does your husband think? And like, that just like, <laughs> psh, blows my mind, right? right? Like. You're a woman, what are you asking me? What does my husband think? Why, what does my husband have to do with my hair? So, in saying that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shout out my husband. And then I'm gonna go to my sister, um, who just gives amazing, unconditional support. And then sometimes she pulls in Sarah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so my family is, is really an amazing, grounding foundation. And the reason why I say that is because they are the ones that really know you the most, yes. right? So it really starts there. Mm -hmm. And so whether they've gotten the same download that you may have gotten for your mission mm -hmm. and your vision, because not all the time they do, yes. but if they're giving you that type of support mm -hmm. that you need, because when you get that type yeah. of support, you can now push that out into the world. Mm -hmm. So I'll start there. And then, um, as Indira mentioned, I, I, um, I, I run a room on Clubhouse, which is an amazing app, shout out to Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do a room on there every morning, and so I, I have an incredible partner, her name is Shirley Ann Felder, oh, yeah. um, where we run that room every morning, mm -hmm. and we've been doing it well over 200 and something episodes, yeah, so yeah. shout out to her. Um, and also some other amazing women in that community um, my mom, um, obviously amazing women up here. So I have so many different communities. And here's the thing that I would say as well, when we're building community. So we need to be in communities of where you are receiving mm -hmm. and communities where you can give. Yes. And so let me just lay that out, what does that look like? So you may be in a group where, well, you're feeding down. But where are you getting your mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. your 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 feed from? Mm -hmm. So you need to be in other communities yeah. where you're not the smartest person in the room. Yes. And so that brings me real quick to ego, mm -hmm. because sometimes we may feel that we just need to be in a community where we may be the smartest in the room. Mm -hmm. I tell anybody every day, uh -huh. every day, all day. I love learning. Mm -hmm. I have a m one of my foundational words is curiosity. Mm -hmm. So for that, I love being in different communities where I can learn from so many different women. Yeah. And what does that create? That creates diversity mm -hmm. and inclusivity. So That's good. Thank I you love so it. much. That just leads me. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Before we move on, I have to say mm -hmm. one other thing. Mm -hmm. um, I do. Um, so my focus was um, on the previous answer it was uh, on the women organizations. But I would say my husband. Yes. 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 Has been the number one uh, propeller of of just. You can do it on a daily basis. Yes. Before I even walked in here, text and then called me, you know, to just remind me of who I am. Exactly. Why I, I, I do what I do or why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. So I just had to say that. And, and my sisters. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and it's funny you say that because as I, as I talked about my husband, I remember one day coming home from work and just out of the blue, I came home and he says, you know, you need to start speaking. I said, what? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah, no, you need to start speaking. You need to start inspiring women. You, mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. And so it was something that I had yeah. in me for 20 years, but never really thought about, okay, how yeah. am I going to put this thing together? So, yes. So, so <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
So good stuff. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to where you talked about being in a circle of, of learning. Yes. Um, I, I'm just going to talk about myself. I always want to be at someone's feet, mm. learning. Um, I think that's where I show up best in the learning scene because sparks just go and they fly. And uh, you know, I I love this conversation and just gleaning all of this. I'm taking all of this in, and you know, um, I'm happy that we're sharing it with our community. Um, so I'm just gonna bring it down one more notch. This is gonna be my final question, ladies. And um, we have our young ladies mm. coming up and um, they need so much support, just as, as we did. Um, and, and a lot of times we didn't always get the support that we needed. Um, and so if there is anything that you're doing with our youth, young ladies in the community, um, and even if it's just an inspirational word for them right now, um, if, um, I'll let you go, Wendy, on that. I just recently was asked to speak at an event that's going to be happening later this month called Empower Her mm -hmm. Educational Summit, and that's being organized by the local PACE Center for Girls. Mm -hmm. So PACE Center for Girls is an organization that aims to improve young women and girls' future through education, advocacy, training, um, and they have locations all throughout the Southeast. So Pace Center for Girls is here on the Treasure Coast. So I'm looking forward to continuing to support their mission. Um, and if you want to learn more, PaceCenter.org, you can find <laughs> out about a Pace Center for Girls near you and how you can support that organization. Okay. Um, let me just, if you all will, I'm going to start with you, and Dara, just sure. tell people how they can get in touch with you, in touch with your services. Sure. Uh, well, uh, Indira at tcoaststudios.com, or you can visit tccm.agency. Um, that's, that's the easiest way. Thank you. Wendy. You can go to yourhappyworkplace.com, and I like to say I'm LinkedIn in the front and Instagram in the back. <laughs> um, I have the most fun on Instagram, so that's yeah. where you can go to yeah, find yeah. Uh, past conversations between Leslie and I about race in the workplace mm -hmm. and other live conversations that I've had with experts. So at Your Happy Workplace on Instagram, and I'm also on LinkedIn. Okay. Leslie. So for me, website is The Mosaic Inc dot com and uh, email is leslie at lesliegeorge.com and I am also on LinkedIn Leslie George and I'm on Instagram as experience Leslie um, and that's really on purpose mm -hmm. because I believe that it's it's an experience um, when you deal with me. It is, it is. But, uh, <laughs> we can all attend to that Leslie. You know so that's what I am on Instagram. But mm -hmm. if I can go back to that last uh, question that you had asked Wendy okay. about young girls. Mm -hmm. And you started by saying that you like to be in circles of learning. Yes. And so I said that one of my foundational words is curiosity. Mm -hmm. That comes from my grandmother. Um, as a young girl, seven, six, eight, I would just, I couldn't wait till the end of the night where we can get together and I could just listen to mm -hmm. her, right? And, and I still remember that. And Mosaic, one of the taglines under Mosaic is sisters inspiring others. The S, the I, and the O, you put those together, and that's my grandmother's nickname. Mm -hmm. So all of that is intentional, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And so what I would say to young girls is that we talk about community here. We talk about um, circles of learning. Get with someone that you could sit at their feet. And that person does not have to have some type of formal education. That's right. The person has life yes, yes. Yes. education and, and so much yes, wisdom. Yes. And there's things that still now that as a little girl mm -hmm. that, oh, that's what she meant. Because yes. yeah. mm -hmm. she would say these things and talk in parables. And obviously as a little girl, you didn't understand. But I just knew that it was something that, was, that had to stay within me. And so as I matured, all of those things started to, to birth out. And then what happens? You have children, you pass yes, that on yeah, to your children, yeah. right? So it's all about that type of legacy yeah. building. So what I would say to any young girl out there, seek out someone in your community that has a type of wisdom 
where you can learn from their life. And I think that we've gotten to an age where we think that when they're older, they don't have anything to give. And maybe they may act like they don't have anything to give. And that's why a platform like Mosaic has been created so that women, no matter what age, from zero to 80, because I also believe that as women, we are this amazing flower. Mm -hmm. And when we get to like 80, 90 years old, mm -hmm. we just open up and this amazing fragrance mm -hmm. that comes out mm -hmm. that anybody just wants to come like honeybees, mm -hmm. anybody just wants to come and just be part of that, mm -hmm. right? So, so that is the platform that I stand on. And it all started from my grandmother. Mm -hmm. It all started from me being six and seven and just listening to her. Mm -hmm. so, so, so those are some things that I do is just want to leave with, with any woman that's listening because you could impart so much mm -hmm. into some young girls that are coming up. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to, since you mentioned that, I didn't yeah. want that to leave. Okay, no problem. So Absolutely. thank you. Thank you, ladies. Sarah Smith, Community Engagement, Community and Business Engagement Coordinator. I have such a long title. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you can reach me at smiths at stlucyco.org. Thank you, Thank Indira, you. Wendy, Leslie. It has been an absolute pleasure to be on this panel with you ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.